Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be reviewing the QBB951 light machine gun. Now there's a bunch of QBZ, QBBs, Type 95B style weapons. They all look very similar. The one we're looking at today is the light machine gun. That's the QBB951. And uh, it is a Chinese made light machine gun. It also comes in assault rifle and carbine format, which are the other two guns that I mentioned. Uh, basically, these are some funny looking bullpup designed weapons. They've been in Battlefield 3 and it's actually a pretty decent weapon in Battlefield 4, but I hadn't really given it much of a try. I was pretty much obsessed with the other awesome weapons in the game and I just really passed over the QBB 951, but now I got some time to take a look at it, see what its benefits are, and it's actually a pretty darn effective light machine gun. Now I have a feeling that in real life the ergonomics of this weapon would drive me crazy just because of the extremely high rail on this weapon. It puts a big distance between the optic, if you're going to mount an optic, or the iron sight, and the actual barrel itself. That's something that just bothers me in general because if you're, say, peeking over a ledge over a corner, your optic could be perfectly on target, but your barrel might actually be shooting directly into the wall. Now because we're playing Battlefield this actually doesn't take into account, in fact uh, pretty much all shooters out there don't account barrel position versus optic position because uh, in the actual games themselves the bullets are coming out of the camera so they're technically coming out of your player's head model which is a weird thing to say but uh, visually it's made to look like the bullets are coming out of the gun but they're actually coming out of your player's head so the barrel position versus your optic position doesn't matter in 99% of shooters. Now regardless of my design preferences for weapons it doesn't really matter when it comes down to Battlefield because we're playing around with the code, the stats of the weapons and speaking of which when we pop up the stats from Simthic.com you'll notice it's got a solid 650 round per minute rate of fire Definitely on the lower end for most weapons out there, but because you have an 80 round drum magazine, you can basically feed a lot of rounds before you need to worry about reloading. Sure, the reload is 3.95 seconds for the short reload, but again, 80 rounds, you're not going to really need to reload too much. You can take down a lot of targets. Now, the main benefits of this weapon are its accuracy, which is attributed to its very low recoil. If you don't like managing recoil, then you'll probably like the QBB 951, although I will say the opposite optic sway is a little bit exaggerated and this is kind of uh, an issue of Battlefield 4 in general when you put red dot sights on certain guns you see a increased optic sway that is a little bit unrealistic and you'll see that here it looks a little bit crazy when I'm actually trying to shoot people with this HD 33 optic. The gun has a nice solid muzzle velocity of 600 meters per second which is going to make it very good for hitting targets at range. The aiming down sight is 0.25 which is good it's not quite as good as some assault rifles out there. There are a few LMGs that have better aiming down sight accuracy like the RPK-74 and the RPK-12, but then again they also have a slightly slower rate of fire, so you're making trade-offs here and there. The QBB 951 is certainly a good medium to long range weapon and it's got decent hip fire accuracy, which is why I equipped the laser sight as soon as it was available, because with 650 rounds per minute rate of fire you're going to be at a disadvantage in close quarters, so you're going to need to take advantage of that hit fire whenever possible a laser sight can really help out with that just remember to turn it off when you're engaging people at extreme long range just so you don't give away your position any more than you need to as far as for under barrel attachments go you can mess around with the angled foregrip and really try and tap fire range i had quite a bit of success with that certainly there are better tap fire machine guns out there but if that is your style angled foregrip is the way to go if you like to do shorter bursts and that can also work if you want to kind of bring the range in a little bit then a stubby grip will suit you nicely i've pretty much shied away from most barrel attachments on lmgs unless they have some crazy recoil uh, and i'm not too concerned about long range accuracy for the most part the qbb 951 is good without too many barrel attachments on there heavy barrel kind of increases the recoil a little too much um, suppressor is fun if you want that stealth effect but other than that a flash hider is the only thing that I would say I would recommend if you actually have it unlocked because it really doesn't change the performance of the gun it just gets rid of that muzzle flash which is great for concealing yourself. Now here I am testing out the QBB 951 on Flood Zone Team Deathmatch which certainly is a chaotic map and when you're playing chaotic TDM style matches or domination style matches 
I recommend trying to stay in cover. Don't move out into big open areas uh, whenever possible. Avoid it just because uh, with this kind of chaotic spawning and map style, you can never really truly predict where your enemy is going to be. And in fact, a good assumption is that once you've been shooting a little bit, you can imagine that somebody is going to be descending on your position because you have been spotted on that mini map. Of course, you could use a suppressor, but even then, good players, adept players, will be able to locate you very quickly. I've got my ears trained to listen to that suppressor sound, and when I hear it, I look on the minimap to make sure that there's a teammate around me, and if there isn't one, then I go and I hunt down the guy that's been shooting a suppressed weapon. This is something that I do all the time, especially when playing TDM or domination style maps, just because uh, every map out there has got some sort of deformation built into it, and it gives you a huge advantage with uh, making your own paths through the map. It's great for flanking your opponents and it always blows my mind how few people actually take advantage of this. Every single class in the game can equip some sort of explosive device that will allow them to blow open walls and create their own paths. If you're not taking advantage of this on TDM matches then I fear you're really not taking advantage of all the flaking opportunities that are available to you. Now one thing that was a little tricky getting used to with this weapon was the reload animation. It looks very similar to your standard bullpup assault rifle reload animation and thus I was reloading it like it was an assault rifle. It's got too long of a reload time to actually reload that frequently. So make sure you take advantage of the fact that you got 80 rounds in your magazine before you hit that reload button because it's a four second reload and you absolutely want to avoid that whenever possible. At the same time, always make sure you have an eye on your ammo counter because I did run around a few corners with about three or four bullets left in my magazine, start a firefight and then immediately get mowed down when I shoot off four rounds and then realize I got nothing left. Silly little mistakes like this are sometimes laughable while you're playing, but you know what? If you could fix those mistakes, often they can lead to really improving your game gameplay. Small mistakes like this are things that you easily notice both while in game and watching your gameplay back. If you have the uh, opportunity to record your own gameplay, it's a great way to analyze yourself and figure out what you're doing wrong. Figuring out simple things like uh, just checking your ammo counter and making sure that you're reloading at appropriate times is a great way to improve your game that doesn't necessarily require you improving um, your reflex times or your overall skill. There's many ways to improve your KDR and your effectiveness that don't involve sheer skill. You'll notice that in most of my weapon reviews and loadout style videos, I'm able to do pretty darn well with whatever weapon that I'm using, and that's just because I follow my fundamental tactics, my fundamental skills, flanking my opponents, trying to take advantage of whatever strategic options I have, and also just um, fixing the silly mistakes that I often made before. You know, I, I did this a lot in Battlefield 3 where there are certain things that um, I really tried to improve, fix upon, like checking the minimap more frequently, being, paying attention to my ammo counter, not reloading too quickly, making sure that I have enough bullets to shoot the follow-up guy when uh, getting into a firefight, that sort of thing, and working on that a lot. Now, I think I've Nailed in a lot of them for BF4, there's still certainly a lot of room for improvement. You always have to keep an open mind and self-analyze. As far as the QBB 951 goes, overall I like it. It's a good machine gun, probably not ideal for close quarters. A map that's medium to longer range you could have quite a bit of fun with. It's definitely not up there on my list of favorite weapons though. Give it a try if you have it unlocked, it's certainly worth figuring out how the gun works. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.